Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to go over the D&D &D package. D&D &D drag and drop is one of those libraries that really helps you along the way. So remember in the last few videos, it was kind of difficult to move things around a little bit. It was a little bit clunky and we had to go through this step and that step. This package really simplifies things. However, there is a few limitations. There's only one significant limitation that I'm going to point out in a little bit. Well, actually, I'll point it out right now. For the regular HTML5 with Dart, you could drag and drop anything, right? So here we have an input type equals button, draggable equals to, true, and you could drag it around, and that's what we did. In the D&D package, you cannot drag and drop input elements, okay? You can drag and drop div elements, images, and a few others, but like the input elements, you cannot drag and drop unlike HTML5 and standard Dart. Okay, so the D&D &D library makes it easier, but it does limit you in that way. And that's not a big deal because how many times, how many web applications have you really seen where you want to drag elements around, right? Not, um, um, dra drag input elements around. Not a whole lot, right? So it's not that big of a deal. But just keep that in mind. So let's just set up the page. First of all, let's go to pubspec.yaml, DND, I don't care what version, pubget, right? So I got it all. Main.dart, import package, DND slash DND.dart. The web page. Let's like make it look like this. I'm just going to use drag button, just a regular um, input button here. These are divs. So type equals button, class equals draggable, and then I have images, just like before, basket, dart, basket, dart, the same class images. And then I have four div elements, all the same class, all draggable equals true, different IDs, like you have to have, and then I put the numbers inside them, right there. And I put a span here, there's other ways to actually do this, but I just kind of cheated. Um, I put a span. Span is almost like a div within a div. It's one of those conceptual or um, organizational type of elements that don't show anything. It just helps you organize and highlight certain parts of the code. So for here, if we go to main.css, what I did was line height. I just separated so the numbers were not at the very top. I pushed them down using a span. I'm sure there's an easier way to do that. I, again, CSS is not my strength, okay, just to let you know. Just to remind you, I should say. The div drops the text align center. So instead of being on the left upper-hand corner, I pushed it to the center and down with, with a span. I'm making a certain height. And I'm going to give it some definition just so I know what I'm dragging when I'm dragging a div element. The basket and the dart. I'm going to push them down and out just so that there's draggable ability. So you can drag these things, these things. Oh, you can actually drag these too. Images. Those should not be draggable. Uh, I guess that they're not actually draggable. It just kind of looks like they actually are. Unless you do that, of course. I think we talked about that before, right? So um, images, if you drag them onto a, or any text, drag it, part of HTML5, it's included. Um, it will show you the source of the image itself. So we have set up the page. Now let's go to the Dart. I'm going to go here first. Element list drag, because we're doing a query selector all. New draggable, that's just the syntax of this particular library package new draggable query selector all dot div drop okay then there's a comma avatar handler colon new avatar handler dot clone now what does that actually mean avatar handler simply means this is just the syntax of it how are you going to handle that element which you are grabbing and moving around okay how do you do it is it the either original or clone We'll do original first. Remember, what is this um, colon doing here? Remember, that's the initializer, right? So before you do anything else, don't go in order. Before you do anything else, look right here. 
So before you instantiate this, look right here. And this says, okay, new um, avatar handler dot original. So from now on, I know what to do. What I am going to do is for every element list drag, when I left click and drag it, the original element is actually going to be moving around. And if I let it go on drag leave, no, wait a minute, on drag end, on drag end, I let it go and it stays where it is. So this is when I grab the element and I move it around, it actually is moving the original element around and going where you want to go. So remember we did that with the previous video. Look how easy it actually is in this video. Okay, so that's number one. If you do drag clone, this is mostly the, the default we're used to. What we do is while we're dragging it, the original stays in its place. I'm cloning the element and I'm dragging the clone around so I can do stuff with that. Okay, so if I let it go, it goes back to the original itself because I'm no longer dragging it around. So that's what that means. I, I did this draggable because draggable is a type in this library. Okay, draggable button, same thing, original. This should drag around, right? Well, not really. And the reason why it doesn't actually drag around, remember, is D&D library or the D&D package, you cannot actually drag and drop input elements. Okay? That's just the example right there. So we have a drag element, and then we're going to have a drop element on something where you're going to drop something onto it, right? Drop zone, query selector, all images. Now, drag dot on drag dot listen. Now the same same context as uh, same um, syntax as before, but notice the draggable element e. This is not a mouse event. This is a draggable event, not draggable element. Draggable event. So it's a different type of event. Well, what is the type of event? Well, we can see e dot, and it gives us a few things. We can change how we handle the avatar. Okay, we can point to the draggable element. I'll, I'll mention that in a little bit. Remember um, before where we did the client rect and where we had to get the start position of where I was clicking on the element? That's automatically built in. The position of the element is automatically built in. So that, that that's pretty nice, right? These are just done for you. So in this particular one, I'm just going to make it nice and simple. Position.eposition. So as I grab these and move them around, notice right here, as I am dragging it, it's telling you where the coordinates actually are. And that's something that we could not easily do in the um, uh, previous one. We, we could do it, but it, it took a little, a few more lines of code to get there. This just automatically has it built in. In this particular library, I like this part the best. So when we go down here, by the way, there's lots of warnings. I'm not exactly sure what the warnings are about. Well, I, I kind of do, but it, it's basically saying that element list does not work with drag and, and stuff like that, because this this is a draggable, right here, a draggable type. But because I'm doing query selector all, I have to say element list. I can't say there's no such thing as draggable list. I don't think there is, at least. Draggable, yeah. Um, it's draggable list. So it's got to be an element list. I'm sure if I put var it would just make it go away. And right here. So it makes most of those go away. Just keep that in mind. Many of these warnings are not actually true errors. It's just, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe the library hasn't caught up with, I really don't know. But but don't worry about it too much. Now when I have drop, dot on drop dot listen same syntax now we notice not a draggable event a drop zone event and again not a mouse event a drop zone event what does the drop zone event have well if you have e you can have the event e you can either point to the draggable event or the drop zone element draggable element or drop zone element sorry what that means is anytime you're going to drag an element onto another what does that mean? You can either point to the thing you are dragging or the thing onto which you are dragging, right? So e.draggableElement is the thing you are dragging. 
E dot drop zone element is the thing on is the drop zone is where you're dropping something onto and you can affect both of those with the drop zone event so that's pretty nice right as opposed to just a mouse event it's a little bit harder to get this information so what are we going to do with this well it's nice and simple code e dot draggable element so the thing i am dragging if i drop it onto the drop zone on drop i'm going to remove it and notice on drop i don't have these prevent, um, default, stop propagations, none of that. It's nice and simple, and it makes a lot more sense. Then I have the E drop zone element, the, so the thing onto which I am dropping, I'm going to change the source of that. Instead of what it is, I'm going to change it to full basket. Do you remember that? If you don't, let's, let's do it. I drag it, I drop it, turns into a full basket, and it disappears, right? So I drag it, it disappears, and it changed the source itself. And I drag it over here. Uh-oh. Eh, close enough. Um, if I wanted to, I could have done like a E dot drops. If E dot drop zone element, um, the, if, if the query selector was dart, then have the source be one thing. And if query selector basket E dot element um, equals query selector basket, I think it was basket, then have another source. So you can always do an if statement and, and to have different sources, but you know that's just the general idea behind it. Um, I think that's most of it. I think there was one more thing I wanted to review. I'm, I'm getting a warning here again, but uh, again, let's talk about the choices here. You can have all, all sorts of things right inside of there. You can even have the ID so that Oh, let's actually do that. Um, print e dot drop zone element dot id. So grab it, drop it, it's basket. Grab it, drop it, it's dart. Oh, by the way, I think I wanted to do this. original, save it all, and so you can make it very flexible in terms of what you want to do. I could drag them all over the place, and then I can drop them there, then I can drop that there. So you can really play around with it and see you have a lot of flexibility, so I really like that. So consider using the D&D library if you want to do something simple, but I wanted to do the, I guess, old-fashioned way because other people will be using that and we have to be aware of that and be able to at least read code and write code in that fashion as well. Okay, so I think that's about it for the drag and drop. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave it in the comment section. But I think we're going to probably move on from here. Thank you.